Hello, hello, hello. Look at those beautiful tanks. So as I mentioned in my uh, my little post in my Discord here, we're going to talk about, where, where did I put it? Oh yeah. Today we're going to sort out the defense of Pskov and look at the Southern Front. I also uh, posted today about a couple of rules that uh, probably should have looked at before we were playing all of these administrative changes. Um, in particular, we've got the leader ratings and what they actually mean. And uh, to be honest, I had not read these rules yet. Um, so it was a bit of an eye-opener. Uh, political basically doesn't matter for our purposes. Um Yes, uh, I guess it could mean that they get executed at some point, but I guess that's the risk you got to take when you're a general. Uh, morale, though, that that's I knew it was impactful, but I didn't realize that it had a direct impact on combat value. So low morale generals, very bad. Definitely want to avoid those guys. Initiative is the one I already kind of knew about. Um, so initiative plays into two places. The first is if you're in combat and you're heavily outnumbered, you have a chance to change it into a probing attack, which incurs more of a, a like super light losses. You'll lose like 40 guys and you can just you'll avoid those big like thousand man losses from being outnumbered or from testing out to see what enemy units in the next tile over which you have to do all the time because like I talked about last time you can't really fly recon uh, administrative is important in that it affects the movement points that you units get and for air generals it affects how quickly their air force gets repaired <clears throat> so i mean this one is important but early in the game this is not as important so we can afford to have generals with slightly lower administration in a in terms of uh, we don't care as much about um, resupply and all of this stuff when you're on the defensive. When you're on the attack, it matters a lot more. And then, uh, I mean, the mech and infantry and motorized and air, all that stuff makes pretty much basic sense. It's like you hire, hire infantry guy is going to fight better with infantry and higher mech guy is going to fight better with higher mech. That all makes a lot of sense. So then I took a look at what we were struggling with in the last episode, the command points and the command capacity. Um, so especially with the command capacity, I, I didn't really understand which units were contributing to that in which ways. And so basically the, the command capacity is a debuff when you're when you're over the cap command limit it debuffs one on top of the normal uh, minus 10 you get on your roll you'll get an additional one for each uh, unit you're over your command limit so if you're 10 over you get an additional minus 10 on your roll and I I'm not probability guy but 
I would assume that's like possibly a hundred percent less effective. It's either a hundred or fifty percent. I'm not sure which, but it's it's a big debuff. So you we're gonna want to go back through the command capacity and try to get everyone back under that. Now th there's only so much we can do because uh, of the pockets just disrupting the command chain. Another big problem the Soviets have early on is that the cores have very low command limits. And you have a lot of cores, but they're not very good at, at actually fighting because their generals kind of suck. Um, now, one thing that it, it is important to realize is that when you have multiple levels of generals, so if you have a core and then an army and then a front and then headquarters, higher, higher, you can potentially have four roles at any one leadership check, which is good. Um, so that that's one of the reasons that the Nazis are more effective early on is because they have uh, those levels already set up. So we're going to jump straight into the northern front this time to look at Peskov in particular and what we can do to protect it. Um, we had already pulled everything out of the pocket by Riga that we could. And I'm just navigating up there. So overall here is we, we have like a essentially a division guarding this entirety of Latvia. And there's really not that much more we can throw down here. We've got a paratrooper division, because these are regiments. These aren't even, or brigades. What is it? A brigade. So it's not even a, a division. That's just a brigade. It's not going to do very much for us. And they're going to be faced by this strong tank division. There's, there's tank divisions in here that are going to come our way. So what we need to do is reposition... Um, we're going to reposition the first motorized core. And we're going to move them down in this area right behind the river line, if we can. Um, so he might already be in a good spot. I'm not sure how far all of our units can move. But we're going to look for everything that's under him. And it's so this tank division here is a good division. And I would love to get them all the way up here, if we could. Just not sure where the best place for him is. We'll put him down here. That'll give him a, a small bonus to attack. Um, we'll move the mechanized unit kind of right next to him. Actually, this guy could get all the way down here. That's probably smarter. And basically, we're just going to leave a gap in between each of these guys. And that's okay because they have a zone of control. They, the enemy can't just drive right between them. He has to at least come into contact with them. We're probably going to be moving this headquarter up here. Because I believe... Oh, this is not a... Ardista. I think we're going to make this a depot, potentially. Unless this is. No, it's not. I think that's the best place for a depot, to be honest. I'm going to put him there, and I'm going to put him on reserve. 
he might get committed. It's a very weak division, but he might be useful for something. I don't know what, but... And does this guy have anything else? No, he just has two units. Incredible. Maybe we could get him this rifle division, but it's a pretty weak division. I'm going to rail it down to here. Just pop it onto this commander. Because this commander is going to hold uh, basically this river line here. So we'll stick a unit here, unit here. And then this guy will be up here. Hopefully I can find one more to stick over here. But maybe they won't get that far. That would be nice. Oops, I'm in rail mode. Okay, so we want unit here. Unit there. We'll start moving him back up to here. And we'll give this guy over to the 24th for Rifle Corps as well. Let's see if that puts us every, everyone should be in range then. If that. This is woods, right? Hmm. It says clear, light woods. Okay. This is light woods, swamp. So they all go back to the 27th Army. Do I have an army? Oh, I do have the front right here. Is 
So that's something. If I stuck the motorized core up here, so that's one, is it one, two, three, four. I wonder, I wonder if that could work with a the depot there. Because then he would still be in range. I guess I could also do a depot here. Let's see. Would he still be in range here? Yes. Just slap down a depot here. Okay, so we're definitely going to need more troops up there. So let's start moving some stuff down from the caucuses. See what we have to throw up to there. I don't really know. We could send a couple tank divisions. Yeah, we could send all three of these. Might as well get them up there. Send them up to Tula this turn. We'll just move the whole the whole twenty six motorized core up. Just have to remember where I put these guys for the next turn. Put him all the way in Tula. Okay, so they're on their way to reinforce. Where's their core commander? There he is. So they'll end up in Paskov next turn, potentially. Maybe two turns. Probably about the same time the Nazis are there, to be honest. What else can we bring down from Leningrad? Nothing. They've got a tank division. With no movement. Wonderful. A border guard division. What's this? Rifle division. Mm, let's just start marching him up towards Pskov, I guess. So 
a pretty high strength rifle division, so we can get him up. Where did I put that? Tusk. This is the area I'm really worried about right here. I would love to have someone in this woods right here. But all of these divisions, except for this border guard division, are pretty much shot. And they'll just get instantly destroyed by anything they face. But perhaps if I stacked all three, they might put up a chan, a little bit of a defense. Not sure. It's worth a try. At least it might defend my headquarters a little bit. I would love to get something here. This is terrible terrain for me, though. So ideally, ideally I would want to defend that on these hills here. I like hold the high ground. Um, the problem is I don't really have anything I could send there. Maybe they'll maybe they'll just be distracted trying to close that pocket, but I don't know. I, I really just don't even know what's in these tiles, if there's anything there or not. Um, but we're going to find out, and it's not going to be good for us. So, find out what happens there. Can I pull these guys any further back? Where do they go to? The 16th Rifle Corps, where are you? Trapped in the pocket? Yeah, trapped in a pocket. Beautiful. Love when they're trapped in the pocket. This guy's going to go to north, I think, in, in the end. For now, we'll just stick him on this side of the river, just so he's a little safer. And we'll put him on refit. And we'll give him to this rifle corps here, 51st Rifles. Fifty first. am I blind? 51st. Uh, well, actually, the 51st Rifles are eventually going to go to the middle, so uh, it's the yellow guys we're going to send north. So eventually all these yellows will will be wrapping up towards Peskov as we get pushed back. And so this, this 
area here, we we don't have to defend it as heavily because it's got great defensive terrain. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring up another army right here to hold this area so Smolensk doesn't get encircled from the north. That's the idea anyways. So we'll give ground and head north with this army, with the uh, 27th army. And then we'll bring in uh, an additional army to defend this northern area above Smolensk. And that's probably going to be one of these, maybe the 28th army. So we'll, we'll probably bring up the 28th army to defend northern Smolensk. Basically, northern Belarus. And to try to prevent them from getting into Russia proper. I don't know if I want to do that this turn, though. Or next turn. I guess I should probably get it going. Um, I can at least send them over to Vileki Luki. Um, so we're going to want who is under the 27th Army. No one? Question mark? That is really weird. I don't really understand this. It's literally zero. Oh, we can drive over to Vlaki Luki at least. Who does the seventh motorized go back to? 20th army. Where's the 20th army? I don't even see the 20th army. Okay, he's even further back. That's where this rifle corps goes to. That's where the motorized corps. Well, we'll give them to the 27th. Marching all these guys up. And then we'll reassign this guy to the 28th Army. Sign you to the 28th Army. And we'll give the 28th Army some of the 20th Army's uh, 
Oh, we can only push him up. Hmm. Yeah, whatever. It works. That actually gets done automatically. What I just did there was I sent a um, understrength support unit back to the Soviet reserves, but that actually gets done as the first step of the logistics phase. You don't need to manually do that. I want to get this guy the hell out of here. I can. I'm going to give him to the nearest mechanized group. Well, maybe I'll just give him to this rifle corps for now, just so he gets a little supply. What I like to do is I like to have the the headquarters on a on its depot or a city just so that they get a little bit more supply. I don't think that these guys can do much here though. These are both wrecked. Give him the 44th Rifle Corps. Does he fit? No, I already have three stacked there. All because Stavka can't move any, f or the Western Front can't move any further. Who's under the 13th Army directly? Maybe we can move him up a little bit. And realistically, we might need another depot here, but we'll just try sticking him on the rail line and see if that helps. He He's probably close enough to the depot that he doesn't really need it.
Not sure what's going to happen here. Just slowly working our way down the line. Okay, so the 21st Army here. Got a good amount of troops. 21st Army might want to... I don't know if we want to defend farther north with him. Probably. Well... First of all, let's at least reset the color of this guy to be white, because we're going to use him in the center. Um, the Northwestern Front is eventually going to be responsible for probably this whole region here, I would imagine. All right, well, I'd say that's about all I can get to today. It has to be kind of a short episode, but I feel like this defensive line up here might be okay. I mean, there's larger gaps than you would generally want if you had enough units to cover everything. But this is kind of, terrain-wise, we're set up pretty well, except for this this area here. So we just kind of have to hope to God that they'll take the bait and just hit us in this area. Because what they want to do is they want to get up to Leningrad. So the fastest route to that is just going right through all these guys. So hopefully that's what they try to do. Now they'll they'll succeed, but at least it'll slow them down. If they go to the right of that that little lake there, I don't even know what it's called in real life. It's called water in the game. <laughs> so if they go to the right of the water uh, we could be screwed because this isn't a real unit this is just a, a machine gun uh, battalion it's not a real unit it's, it's totally useless and we don't really have anything else we can bring because uh, this our new army that we just brought up to support us here is a long way off the 28th army but eventually the 28th army can can get assigned to that front as well unless they end up getting collapsed back towards moscow not sure exactly what will happen with them um so next time the goal is going to be to get from here south uh, so we pretty much did mogolev north north and everything here is pretty solid, or at least as solid as we can get it on this turn. And then the the next time I play, I'm probably going to focus on this little group here. Um, and then trying to sort out some of these uh, pink guys. Because we had a good amount of guys getting circled here, which is very unfortunate, but... I'm not sure if we can break them out in some way. I don't think so. So that's that's a big pain in the ass. Um, and again, we had a, a few units getting circled here. But the good news is that we should be able to at least kind of stem the tide here. This is a really 
now overextended tank line. And so if we could sneak in and and hamper their efforts at all to capture one of these rail lines just for a turn, it can make a huge difference. So like this guy might be able to just drive up into that. Um, I mean, what we can do is use the cavalry, the broken down cavalry division to at least scout it. Uh, they they don't see anything right there, so it's could be clear enough for us to defend it here. Just trying to decide if it's better to advance into this or into here. I'd say into Tarnapol. And then we'll bail this guy out back towards... Back this way. Where's this guy's commander? Oh, way over here. Who else does he have? But yeah, that's that's basically my plan is to try to at least put up some sort of a fight in this this vicinity here. And uh we'll go from there. Now, one thing I'm gonna get in the habit of doing is starting off every episode by doing a a brief unit history and or rules analysis slash like what I started with this episode is looking at some rules that were related to the episode here. Um, but I might also include episodes where we, we look at the Wikipedia page for one of these units and discuss what kind of happened with them historically. So like this 28th Army that we just moved up, it was brought down from the Archangelesky Military District and had two rifle corps and a motorized division. So we're actually using it relatively historically. We're bringing it in. Um, so let's see where it got sent. Yeah, it got sent to Smolensk. And it was encircled in the Smolensk pocket and destroyed. Hopefully we uh, don't get destroyed, but if we do, at least we'll be matching its historical use. Um, very interesting that the general was killed by artillery fire. Um, and he was actually sentenced to death in absentia. So, so, and he, he wasn't, his name wasn't cleared until 1953. Well, I'm hoping we can do, do a little bit better than that for you, Buka, Perkev, Perkev, because he's actually not a bad general. He really is not. He's not terrible, especially with the infantry. He's a pretty damn good de general, so. I would hate to lose him. But if he gets killed by artillery, he gets killed by artillery. That's all there is to it. Um, so that'll be our goal next time. We'll try to get all the way to the bottom. Um, and I'm not sure exactly what my plans are here in the very far south, but uh, this is this area is a lot less threatening early on because the Romanians are, are not as strong as the Germans. Um, so I'm not going to agonize over every low move there. And I think a lot of these units are still locked anyways, if I remember right. Yeah, this I think this whole purple or lilac color area is all locked. Yeah, none of these are movable. So we just kind of have to let it happen down here. So when we get to the end of the pink, that's the end of our turn. So we've got another two or three armies left to do um, 
because a, a lot of this, this looks like a lot of units, but a lot of these are just the little fort units. Like, see all the ones that are highlighted yellow here? We're not going to be doing anything with those. You can't move them. They're just useless. But they give you a kind of a cheat sheet of where some strong positions might be. Um, I mean, the problem in Ukraine in general, and this, this is true today, and it was true in 1941 is the initial terrain is great tank country and it's not until the weather kicks in that you can get bogged down but if you if you time it right you can have big offensives just like we saw in the summer offensive in 2022 in ukraine you it's it's a kind of a mirror image of what happened in world war ii um so you can gain a lot of ground uh, you can also lose a lot of ground really fast. And that's what's going to happen to us here because um, these tank divisions are just unstoppable. They'll just blast right through us. And there's nothing we can do. All we can do is try to slow them down until we get our divisions built. The last thing we're going to do on the turn uh, before we click the click the button is we're going to go back through the commander's report and we're going to look at the um, all of the su uh, support equipment. Um, it's called supply and then you go to, uh, where the hell is it? Oops, I was on the wrong one. You go to HQ, this tab here, and then this this field here supply L support level we're going to set a lot of these to be zero and then we'll, we'll be getting some support units that'll flow up to Stavka because Stavka will be set to like the highest level possible and the rest of them will kind of kick out their what they have now now we're going to lock a few of them as well um in the vital places that we know we're going to get hit right next turn. But if you're not in immediate danger, you don't need support. And that stuff is going to have to get shifted to the front lines. And you want to do that as early as possible. You want to get everything up to the, up to the top and then push back down before you get into any real combat. And this is not real combat that we're going to be in this turn uh, because we are at such a large disadvantage. So the best thing to do is get all that support equipment off of the front lines so it doesn't get killed. And then we can put it back when we can actually get things more solidified. So this is one of our focuses next time. And uh, that, that'll really help us out once we have that organized because... Then whenever you want to bring down a little bit of support, um, so like this guy here, he's got nothing. He's got no artillery. Um, so what we could always, what you can always do is click this assign support units and then give him some artillery. Now a lot of this stuff is at the front level, but we actually want to push it up one level higher and get it all the way up to the Stavka level. That way, anyone in the whole army has access to that stuff. And because there's, in the rules, it says there is no limit to how far you can move it in a single turn. So even if you're all the way at the bottom here or all the way at the top, you can still get support equipment from Stavka, even if Stavka is located in Moscow. So it's it's really how the game is meant to be played. You're You're meant to push everything up. And then let it flow back down as you need it. Um, and and I'll do that right before the turn ends. I'll just go back through and look at all the support equipment. Um, but but this next turn is the the next play is just to set up our guys where we want them, then to make sure they have the equipment that they they need, and then after that we'll focus on getting them under the right commanders in the future turns because we're eventually going to run out of action points. Um, the one additional thing that you have to do as Soviets is you have to build new units. 
So we're going to be recruiting a whole bunch of divisions um, that will throw right in the front lines uh, pretty much as soon as they're built. And uh, that's that's basically the the goal. So I know it's it's somewhat brutal watching this because turn one is a long turn for the Soviets. It's it's a long turn for the Germans too, in some ways, because you want to try to get your pockets perfect. But as the Soviets, you are reorganizing your entire army after taking a devastating uh, amount of losses like a quarter million men lost and another half a million in a pocket in various pockets. Um, so just imagine the, the amount of organizational chaos that causes. And that, that's what we're facing here. And we're, we're just trying to stem the tide, but you can already see that the, the line is starting to form here and we're going to give ground um, we're going to let them advance here. Uh, but, but after that, we're going to fight. We're not going to give up the Smolensk area easily. This is going to be heavily defended, um, such as it is. Uh, the next step is trying to heavily defend the rest of this river line and eventually defend Kiev. Because um, the access point for Kiev is actually going to be right through this pocket and from the north. That's that's one of the easiest ways to get to it. Because then you can just kind of avoid some of these really swampy areas. But uh, a lot of this is really bad terrain for them. So it's going to take them a while. We've got time. This doesn't need to be set up instantly. Um, the, the other w way that you can go as the axis is um, kind of straight up through this rail line but the problem with that is i've got several armies sitting right here so we can fight them tooth and nail for every inch of that mi that mileage it's this area here that's going to be more open but slower to maneuver through because of the bad terrain and the bad roads um, but eventually we're going to have to fight for that as well and that's going to be approximately an army army and a half that'll be handling that so uh, those are the places you kind of have to sacrifice. You have to sacrifice the the area up near Rezev. Uh, so this whole forest area, you have to hold it with less troops than you would like to because you need everything near Smolensk and eventually near Tula and Moscow. Uh, so this, the, the central part of this line from, from like this square to this, to this hex to Tula that has to be really strong but to the north of it um, you can kind of let them go there's not much up here uh, what the hell are they going to do off in the Arctic there's there's not much for them to do they're welcome to it frankly so but we want to try to hold this area here from Peskov um, over to like EM I think that's how I pronounce it EM Yemen I don't know. Um, and you definitely want to try to hold Leningrad if you can. Uh, but but both of those are tenuous objectives at best. Um, so I hope you enjoyed watching it. And uh, if you have any comments or, or questions, you can always post them in the little Discord that I showed. I will start posting that in the video links I, I hadn't in the first few videos just because I needed time to set it up, but it's a little bit more complete now, so I'll put it in there if you feel like taking a look at that. Otherwise, you could always just comment on the YouTube video. Have a nice day.